distinction between hours of rent and means profit. Hours of rent is the rent payable to a landlord by tenant before the expiration or determination of the tenancy. Means profit, on the other hand, is the amount payable by a tenant to a landlord after the expiration of the tenancy and the retention of the premises. Covenant to pay rates and taxes. This covenant is otherwise known as a covenant to pay outgoings. On the question of who is liable to pay the particular rates, two things are to be considered. A. The position of the law providing for the payment on who is to pay the particular rates and taxes. B. Consideration of whether that particular party is to continue to pay the rates. The answer is no, unless it has been stated that even where new rates are introduced, such person shall continue paying the rates. In drafting this clause, it should be made wide enough to accommodate the future outgoings. Perfect example to pay rate and taxes, levies, duties, and outgoings now or as may be subsequently imposed on the property, whether payable by the landlord or not. Remedies for the breach of this covenant are 1. An action to recover the outgoings and rates that have accrued. 2. An action for damages. 3. An action for forfeiture and reentry where the lease contains a proviso to that effect. Covenant to repair. Repairs means the replacement of subsidiary parts of the premises, while to renew refers to the replacement of substantial parts or whole of the premises. The essence of inserting this covenant in the lease is to maintain the property in a good condition. It is usual to apportion between the landlord and tenant the obligation to repair. If it is a lease of short duration, the landlord usually takes the obligation to repair. If the lease is of a longer duration, the tenant takes the obligation to repair section 64 and 65 FTG of the Registered Landlord of Legal State. In the construction or drafting of this covenant, the age, character, locality of the premises and general nature of the property at the commencement of the lease are to be considered by the solicitor. Very important, it is advisable that the lessor should be responsible for structural repairs, external parts, while the lessor is responsible for the other parts. Structural parts include the foundation, the roof, columns, structure, walls, etc. Example 1. To keep the premises in a good state of repairs and so to deliver possession of the premises at the end of the term. There are noticeable defects in the above clause and they are 1. It does not make provision for the landlord to enter the premises and make inventories. 2. It does not state when the repairs are to start. 3. The tenant is unprotected as to fair wear and tear of the property. The expression good tenantable repairs, good repairs and good habitable repairs all mean the same thing. The phrase reasonable wear and tear accepted implies that the lessee is relieved from liability from any state of disrepair so long as the disrepair results from a reasonable use of the premises and effect of natural elements. Advantages of the clause are 1. It is easy to determine. 2. It facilitates the payment of deposits which is refundable at the end of the term. Very important, the interpretation of a covenant to repair in a metropolis is different from interpretation to repair in a rural area. Remedies for breach of covenant to repair. This is usually determined by whether or not the tenant is in possession of the premises. Where the tenant is in possession of the premises, the following steps are to be taken. A. Serve the tenant a notice to repair. B. Where there is a continuous default, an order for forfeiture and re-entry into the property. C. An action for specific performance. D. An action for damages. Where the tenant is no longer in possession. A. An action for damages to the tune of the amount needed for the carrying out of the repairs. B. An action for loss of rent. Where the landlord is in breach, A. The tenant may serve the landlord a notice to repair, B. The tenant may institute an action in court for specific performance. This, however, does not in any way empower the tenant to withhold the rent. The tenant can not also be justified to leave the premises before the end of the term in the lease on the ground that the landlord has failed to make repairs. This practically means that the tenant should not ask for a refund of his rent where he leaves the property before the expiration of the term on the ground that the landlord has refused to effect repairs on the property. Covenant against assigning and subletting. The tenant may for some reasons decide to assign or sublet his interest in the lease to a third party. This covenant ensures that the landlord is in control of the tenant occupying the premises. 
where you come in and stitch touch the tenant shall not assign or part with possession this is an absolute bow prohibition against assigning or subletting and it's rather considered as harsh on the tenant the statement is ambiguous and as such the tenant may still assign his interest on the property therefore it is advisable that all the acts prohibited must be covered in the draft of the covenant a perfect example is as follows covenant not to assign on the lead charge or otherwise part with possession of the property very important where the tenant permits another person to use the premises e.g permit a licensee to use the premises this does not amount to a breach of the covenant not to assign or sublet where the lease is silent on the issue of whether or not the tenant can sublet, the tenant may assign or sublet the premises without restrictions. First draft tenant not to assign on the lead charge or party possession of the premises. This is an absolute bar. Here the tenant does not have the right to sublet or assign. He is ever advised to negotiate with the landlord for an amendment of the set clause. Second draft Tenant not to assign, sublet, charge or part of the possession of the property or any part of it without the written consent of the landlord. This is a qualified prohibition. It is not good enough as the test for granting or refusing such consent is subjective. Third draft. Tenant not to assign, sublet, charge or otherwise part of the possession of the premises or any part thereof without the consent of the landlord in writing. First, add and obtain such consent not to be unreasonably withheld in the case of a responsible or respectable person. This is an ideal clause. It is used to ensure a balance of competing interests of the parties. Once consent is given, it cannot be withdrawn. Ideal Films Renting Company and Nielsen. Unreasonable refusal. For refusal to be reasonable or not, the following must be put into consideration. 1. Personality of the tenant. The landlord is expected to be objective in his refusal. He should inquire about the sub-tenant's financial standing. His inquiries should reveal if the said tenant is bankrupt or a notorious absconder. 2. The landlord should also find out the use or purpose for which the sub-tenant requires the premises. 3. The nature of the premises should also be put into consideration. The burden of proving that the reason for the refusal to sublet the premises by the landlord is unsubstantiated lies on the tenant. Holder, Bros and Co. Limited and Gibbs, 1925, CH 575. Remedies available to the tenant. 1. The tenant can seek a declaration that the refusal of the landlord is unreasonable. 2. The tenant may compel the landlord to give his consent in an action for specific performance. 3. The tenant may ignore the landlord and sublet and thereafter apply for an order of injunction restraining the landlord from harassing the sub-tenant. 4. The tenant may sue and ask for damages. Remedies available to the landlord. Where the tenant is also in breach, the landlord as well is entitled to some remedies. The landlord may file an action in corporate for an order of re-entry and forfeiture of the lease. Very important, the landlord cannot resort to self-help. Ujuku and Governor of Lagos State, 1985, JLR 49189 CA. Covenant not to make alteration. Alterations include additions or changes to the premises, e.g. breaking of the walls, rocking of the veranda, repainting of the walls, etc. This is a tenant covenant to the landlord. The landlord may allow the tenant to make alterations on the property, but at the end of the demise period, the tenant shall restore the premises to its original state. The consent against alteration may be absolute or conditional and it may be drafted as follows. The tenant shall not make any alteration to the premises except for the installation of air conditioners and burglary proof without the written consent of the landlord and to restore the property to its original position at the end of the term of the lease. Quick last note is powered by Rooms and Luxury, your choice real estate agency in Lagos, Nigeria. Address is number 7 Tower Corny Close of Ili Mike Crescent, Igwe from Lake Lagos, Nigeria. Tell WhatsApp 081-477-5425-091-5691-367. And send your emails to Ronums and Luxury at gmail.com. Instagram, Ronums and Luxury. Facebook, Ronums and Luxury. And call them for all your real estate questions. For sponsorship and adverse placement, please contact 0912 or send an email to readersandpartners.chambers at gmail.com.